Good evening, Miss. How are you? Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome to the class. How are you doing today? Well, I hope you're doing great. Thank you very much for your punctuality. Thank you very much for being here in the class, uh, trying to learn English and all, right? So uh, we're gonna continue today with the unit number three because that's the unit we're talking about. And today I would like to, well, tomorrow, I think, I'd like to go with the, the section four. So we finish section four and then on Friday, probably we can finish the midterm, right? Because that's the only thing we're missing, the midterm there. Uh, to, uh, to finish, because if you know, we are finishing on August 23rd. So basically one week. So it's only Thursday, Friday, and then we only have three classes next week. And that's gonna be it, and then we're gonna finish. If I if I'm not mistaken, that's the day when we're gonna finish. Okay, so uh, I hope everyone is working on the platform because it doesn't matter if I work in the platform with you or if I try to help you. It won't do anything if you don't do the work. But si no hacemos el trabajo, pues no va a servir. Miss, se le escucha bien suave. No sé si soy solo yo. Me pueden ayudar ahí a ver si se escucha suave para todos. Ya escucho bien. Oh, okay. Vamos a quitar el volumen, please. Maybe. I don't know. Something related to that. Okay. 
Okay, as I was saying before, uh, we're going to finish pretty soon. We're going to finish uh, the classes. So I hope that you're connected and I hope that you're working on the platform because we have to be working there on the platform because um, it's classes plus being connected uh, or working on the platform, okay? Because we finish already working on unit, wait a minute. We finished working on unit three or section three, and then we are now on section uh, four. Well, we are now starting section three, but on the platform, we finished sec section three already. So we're gonna go with the uh, section four, okay? Now, uh, we're gonna go here. Let me see something. Yesterday we were practicing. Oh yeah, we had a we had a presentation yesterday, and we were doing some meanings. So today we're gonna continue with a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna continue with a reading and something here we have. Okay. Anyways, so now I'm gonna start with the attendance because it's time already, and I consider it's time. I'm just going to send a message to everyone on WhatsApp group because I, I have to appreciate that you're connected to the class. Okay, there's the message. Okay, anyways, let's go. Um, here we are. Ana Veronica Hernandez Rodriguez. Yeah. Angela Guadalupe Hernandez Sanchez. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez, Denis Enrique Saldaña Claros, Eric Enrique Reyes Martínez, Present, miss. Eric José Reyes Molina, Gerson Alexis Funes Sosa, Jennifer Esmeralda Maya Arias, Present, miss. Johnny Alexander Escobar Calderón, José Alfredo Hueso López, Present, miss. Johnny. Yes. Present, miss. Present, mi José Alfredo. Yes. Um, Jocelyn Angelina Ramírez. Estoy yo, creo. Yes, he did. Julio César Aguillón Arevalo. Present. María Julia Ramos Olívar. <coughs> Mayra Patricia Artiga Vázquez. Mónica Wendy Ávalo Cirón. Present. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. José Figueroa Cisneros. Present. Rafael Antonio Hernández Castillo. Rafael Antonio Martínez Navarrete. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Silvia Patricia Zaituno Méndez. <coughs> Okay. Omar Seth Galicia López. Present, Miss. Amado Javier Urrutia Rivera. Okay, that's it. Now, uh, we're going to continue right now, and we're going to go here with an activity we have in the book. But before going to the activity, I'd like to explain a grammar topic, okay? Let me show you, let me share my screen. Okay, here we are. So this is a grammar activity that we have here or a grammar topic that I have to explain to you today, okay? So it says how to use indirect questions, information questions, because if you remember in um, like a few classes ago, we learned how to use indirect questions, like, uh, but they were closed questions, right? Solo que respondíamos con sí o con no, right? Like, can you tell me uh, if she works here? Decíamos yes or no, right? That's it. But now we're going to go with those type of indirect questions, but for information questions, okay? 
para preguntas de información. Information questions. And here we have these ones that it says information questions are not introduced by if. Aquí ya no vamos a usar el if. Instead, they are introduced with a WH word. Now we're going to use the WH words like who, what, when, why, and all those things, right? Like, you know. Now, we have examples here. And here, for example, we have this one. I wonder what the two pieces I need to weld are. I wonder what the two. So in this part, we are saying specifically what we want. Now here, compared to this one, instead of saying if or I wonder, we're going to say, what are the two pieces I need to weld? What are the two pieces I need to weld? Okay, so in this one, we say, I wonder, and here we have the what. So this is the structure we're studying. Esta es la estructura que estamos estudiando, right? I indirect questions, que son como formales, and uh, introduced by WH words. I wonder what the two pieces I need to weld are. And this one here, se llaman preguntas indirectas, y lo voy a decir en español porque quiero que quede muy claro. Se llaman preguntas indirectas porque son, they are not questions. No son preguntas, ¿lo ven? Can you see it? In this case, we have it as a question, but it is not a question, right? Like, me preguntaba, but I'm not using a question mark. Can you see that? I'm not using a question mark. Like in this case here. Here, I'm using question mark, you see? But in this case, I'm not using it. Instead of that, I'm using the word wonder, right, to talk about it. I wonder what the two pieces I need to weld are. Compared to this one that says, what are the two pieces? What are the two pieces I need to weld? Both questions are grammatically correct. Both questions are correct, okay? But this one here is a little bit more formal. Now, let's go with example number two. I like to know, you see, that is the uh, indirect part. I like to know, and here we have the complement, and it's introduced by a WH question word, like I explained to you. When the provided will send the order of screws, okay? Oh, and yesterday we were looking at this verb. Do you remember screw yesterday? Do you remember the meaning? We had a screw as a verb, a screw as a noun. You don't remember? So screw as a verb means like atornillar. And a screw as a noun, what do you think it is? What do you think is the meaning? Tornillo. Un tornillo. Tornillo? You sure? Singular. Yeah, it's a singular. It's a singular, but it's a tornillo, right? Like in the in the screw, the screw. So now, uh, in the in this part, it's a noun, right? It's a plural, but it's a noun. Aquí es un noun, no es un verbo. So I like to know when the provider will send the order of screws. Compare to when will the provider send the order of screws. Estas son las estructuras básicas, you guys. Las que ya conocemos, okay? These are the basic structures, las que ya conocemos. Lo ahorita lo que estamos haciendo es introducirlo con palabras que suenen más polite y no son preguntas. Es como, me preguntaba si quisieras ir a caminar. Yes? En lugar de, ¿quieres ir a caminar? You know? That's what, I'm, what we're doing. That's easy, easy, easy what we're doing, ¿ok? And this one, aquí sí es una pregunta. Pero porque estamos utilizando el would you al inicio. ¿Se acuerdan de eso? De como we use would you. Now, if I'm using one of these auxiliary words, then I'm going to use a question mark at the end. Because this one says, would you mind telling us, ¿Te importaría decirnos? Would you mind telling us how much the provider charges to process the, process the order? Would you mind telling us how much the provider charges to process the order? Compared to how much does the provider charge to process the order? Okay, 
And in this part, if you can see, the verb is in third person. Alguien podría decirme por qué aquí el verbo está en tercera persona y aquí no. What is the difference? Pueden verlo. Eh, la S. Ajá, por pero el auxiliar. ¿Por qué? Exacto. Pero por el, ahí. por el auxiliar. Por el auxiliar. Yes, yeah. because the auxiliary. Yes, that is correct. Because when we have an auxiliary, eso me dice que ya la tercera persona ya va ahí, no tengo que agregarla de nuevo. Pero en este caso, como es una pregunta, ven, aquí directamente digo the auxiliary. Pero en esta parte, como la pregunta no es introduced, ¿ok? Por un auxiliary verb, sino que por esta frase, entonces acá cambia. Es como lo que vimos, ya lo vimos, the same thing. Next, would you let me know what time the first batch is expected to be completed? ¿Ok? What time is the first batch expected to be completed? ¿Ok? The same thing, but in this case, we're introducing the questions by using uh, phrases like, would you like, would you mind telling me, would you um, help me, things like that. And in this first case, we're introducing with phrases, okay? These ones are questions, these ones are phrases, like sentences. Now, it says here, reminder, yeah, lo que estamos diciendo, helping verbs like do, does, and did are not included in indirect questions, okay? They are not included, okay? Only in the first questions, well, in these ones, they are included in the basic ones. But in direct questions, they are not included. Now, <clears throat> if the introductory segment is a phrase, lo mismo que les acabo de decir, use a period, phrase, period, okay? At the end of the indirect question. If the phrase is a question, you see, like this is opening as a question, then use a question mark, okay? We know that already. So this is the grammar topic that I'm explaining, but let's go with some examples, okay? Okay, so do, oh, well, remember that it's not, is where do you, live okay this is a basic question for you where do you live but now if i want to make this as a indirect question i will start with i wonder but if i start this as i wonder what does it tell you this is a question or this is a phrase what do you think phrase. it's a phrase okay i wonder where, now, am I going to use the auxiliary verb do? ¿Creen que debo escribir de nuevo el do ahí para hacer la pregunta? Creo que no. No, right. No. La dice, no, we don't use the, the auxiliary. So, I, I wonder where you live. Y pongo un question mark o period. 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 Period, because Period. it's a phrase. Yes? ¿Está claro eso? Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, let's go with another one, okay? <laughs> okay, what is your job? Okay, what is your job? This question is basic. You know the meaning. What is your job? Oh, my job is teaching. Oh, it's a teacher. Okay, I'm a teacher. What is your job? I'm a teacher. But now we're going to make it an indirect question. And I would say, Will you tell me? Will you tell me? Okay. So in this case, do you think this is a question or a sentence? This is a question or a phrase? Question. It's a question because it's starting with would you, right? So, would you tell me what, what, your, what your job is? Exactly. And see, in this case, we look at it different, right? ¿Cuál es tu trabajo? Ok. 
Okay, so in this case, the is what is here because this is a question, but in this case, this part is the question. So the verb to be necesita ir después del sujeto. Yes, the same thing as we were doing like a normal sentence, okay? Let's do another one just to make sure that we are understanding. Let's do another question. Mm, what do you study? What do you study? Okay. We're going to make this as a phrase. Y para hacerlo con una phrase, podría empezarlo con would you o con I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Very good job. I wonder. Okay. I wonder. What do you study or you study? You study. You study. You study. In this case, you see, I don't need the auxiliary because this is indirect question. And of course, I need a question mark, not, I mean, I need a period, not a question mark. Okay. Is this topic? Okay, let's see. We're going to identify them just for you to si quieren tomar un screenshot y mandarlo phrase and this is question and this is phrase si alguien quiere tomar un screenshot para mandarlo al grupo that will be perfect okay Okay, there. Now, we're gonna make some exercises, yes? So we have this one. What is your name? Who is? Why do you work here? Where does, well, sorry, where does he live? When, when, when do you have vacation? Vacation. Mm, you have vacations. Um, what, why, where, when, who, how, how old are you? Okay, so in this case, we're going to have, let's see, one, two, three, four, and five questions, okay? So what we need to do is to make these questions into indirect questions. Pero les voy a dar la instrucción de cómo lo van a usar. Okay? I'm going to give you the instructions. Si va a ser una, una phrase o si va a ser en una question. Esta va a ser phrase. Esta va a ser question. Esta va a ser question two. Esta va a ser phrase. Okay, y esta va a ser question. Ok, so que lo único que tenemos que hacer, convertirlas. Yes, les voy a dar un ejemplo aquí abajo para que entiendan bien. Again, what I'm explaining. Example. What is your favorite food? Ok, what is your favorite food? This is the example. Y lo vamos a convertir en una phrase, the indirect question. Phrase. Miren el example que voy a hacer. Aquí ya es la tarea. Esto es lo que les estoy pidiendo yo que haga. Como es una phrase, voy a iniciar con I wonder o voy a iniciar con would you. I wonder. I wonder. Que escucha por ahí, pero luego no. Okay, I wonder. So, I wonder. What 
el verbo to be no, right? What I want to what your your favorite food is. Question mark or period? Period. I wonder what your favorite food is. You see? This is what we're gonna do. Es lo que vamos a hacer. ¿Se entiende? Do we get it? Yeah? Okay. Now, pueden, ahora sí pueden tomar un screenshot ahí de todo eso. You can send it to the WhatsApp group so we can work on this. <clears throat> Remember, we're working phrases and we are working uh, questions, okay? Just to be sure of what we're doing. I have some listeners there. Tengo unos que están de listeners, but they are not too much. Okay, let me see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This one is good. Okay, si el breaker room no funciona, no están participando, no están hablando, you call me, okay? Okay, there we go, a resolver esto. Ajá, y de eso, ¿qué, qué se supone? Lo que la mía está aquí. Miss, I don't listen to activity. Ok, so vamos a convertir esas questions, basic questions, in indirect questions, right? O phrases. Según la explicación que les di, de I wonder, o utilizando would you like to. I wonder what your name is. Exactly, Julio, good job. Ramiro, too. Good job. Excellent. Perfect. Me alegra que he entendido. Ok, Miss. Miss, al final sería ese phrase. Si, lo, si le ponemos el is al final, creo que sería pregunta y ella quiere phrase. No sé si yo entendí mal. It's ok. It's a question. Porque miren como el ejemplo que yo les di. Is va al final. Y es una phrase. Right? Ok. So, ¿Cómo Entonces, creen que sería el number one? Díganmelo y les digo si está correct or not. 
Yeah, what, uh, I wonder what your name. I wonder what your name is. Is, is. correct. Correct, that is correct, perfect. Mm -hmm. Good job. Mm -hmm. What is your name is?
¿Qué tiene de malo? La primera le falta el bis. En la primera, estás perdiendo el verbo. En la segunda, estás perdiendo el verbo. ¿Puedes decirme por qué? El sujeto. Um, eh, en la number three, would you tell me where he? Ok, me hace falta tercera persona. ¿Ya se fijaron? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Edwards tendría que igual la tercera y pues en la cuarta eh, I wonder when es que no es bueno yo les hacía esa corrección pero Es que sería, would you tell me why, would you tell me why uh, what's here? Y el, en la tres, pues, mover okay. el hip. Listen to me. Would you tell me why your works here? Ok, bien. Acá estamos hablando de you como sujeto, ¿verdad? Entonces el your, esa era, está de más ahí. Ok. Okay. Okay. 
Ahora la es, ¿por qué ponemos es si no es tercera persona? Teacher, es que como arriba yo vi que llevaba eh, auxiliar das, entonces eh, pensé que se sustituía el das y se ponía la s. Déjenme ver, dejen arriba, quiero ver. Why do you work here? No, no lleva das, lleva do. Tienes razón. En el tercero es que lleva das. Entonces, así pues, tenemos la S también y acá la R. Okay, la ¿no? siguiente está mal porque dice, eh, Will you tell me where lives he? Me están poniendo primero el sujeto y después el verbo. Entonces, es al revés. Pues, ajá. Y en la cuarta, solo la aire creo que está mal y tendríamos que poner have vacation. I wonder when you have vacation. La pregunta es, when do you have vacation? I, when, I wonder when you have vacation. Yes, it's correct. Ahí estamos. Yes, good job. Hello, Miss Israel. Right. It's okay, the, the uh, answers or no? Oh. Yes, good job, excellent. Thank you very much. Ahí ya solo no pude marcarles el, quitarles la ex, no sé por qué no me deja. It doesn't let me. It doesn't allow me. No me deja, yo intenté borrarlas. Ni a mí tampoco. I tried to, but it doesn't, it doesn't allow me. Ok. Hola, ya estoy de vuelta, me soltó la tormenta. Ok, pero ya volvemos todos. We're coming back here. Okay, let's see. Um, the first one was, solo se la puede decir y ustedes me la dicen como debería ir. What is your name, right? Tenía que ir en frase. So, Rafael Martinez, tell me, what is the answer? Rafael Martinez? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, ok, thank you, María. No puedes compartir pantalla. No puedes compartir pantalla. Sorry. Ok. Just speaking. Yeah. So, what is your name? Iba a empezar. I wonder. I wonder uh, what is what your name is. I wonder what your name is. Correct. Good job. Thank you, Rafael. Rafael, can you choose the next person? Yeah. Uh. José Alfredo. Ok, José Alfredo. The question was, why do you work here? What is the answer? Yes, number two. Yeah. Would you tell me why you work here? 
Excellent, good job. Jose Alfredo, can you choose the next person? Uh, uh, Ana Verónica Hernández. Okay. Ah, no, no, está de oyente, dice aquí. No, 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 no pero sí está, sí está. Ella se lo ha puesto, pero hoy no está de oyente. Yes. Uh, thank you. Where, where does he live, sería, right? Okay. No, number three, ¿verdad? Yeah, number three. Will you tell me where he lives? Excellent, good job. Ana Verónica, can you choose the next participant? Um, quiero ver, ¿quién me responde? Um, um, eh, Omar. Omar, okay, Omar. Thank you, Ana. Omar, number four. When do you have vacation? ¿Cuál sería la answer? Hola. Eh, repeat, catch up, please. Vamos a hacerla in the, uh, indirect, right? Es una phrase. El, oh. When do you have vacation? Hello, I don't. I don't listen. I have. I don't have connection. Okay, I think he has problems with connection. Okay, let's say. Okay, Oseas, can you tell me number four, please, Oseas? Okay. Number four? I wonder Hello. I wonder when you have vacation. I wonder when you have vacation. Excellent, good job. And the last one I'm gonna choose, Oseas for you, I'm gonna choose Maria Julia, okay? Maria Julia, how old are you? Is the question. How how old? Hello. Hello, Aurita. <laughs> Yo creo que Omar sí. sí tiene problemas de internet. <laughs> Yo también. Would you, would you mind? I have a trouble with connection, Miss. I'm sorry. Yes, uh -huh. don't worry, Omar. Don't worry. It's okay. Okay, okay María Julia, continue. Would you mind telling me how old you are? Excellent. Good job. Good job. Excellent. That's it. So I think it's pretty clear. It's the same basic, basic questions we had, like in the past. We have learned how to do them. WH question words, but in this case, we're going to use it like in a more in a polite way, right? Like in a more polite way and also with will you or I wonder phrases like that, okay? Also, you can say, I was wondering what is your name? Me estaba preguntando, I was wondering, in lugar de decir I wonder, you can say that, okay? Let's go with the next activity we have here in this part. And in this one says, Number the drawings in the correct order to assemble or the parts of a bike, okay? And hacer the production, ustedes, the, the, the assembling. Van a enumerar the drawings in the correct order de cómo se va armando una bicycle, okay? So you're going to go to the breakout rooms, discuss with your classmates, and then you're going to tell me what is number one, que parte va number two, number three, number four, number five, okay? I think this is the last one, okay? The one that says fragile, or maybe the chipping, chipping, yeah. Chipping is the fragile, is the last one, okay? So, let's see. Do you understand the activity? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes, miss, okay, yes. It's easy, super easy to do. Nothing complicated at all. Let's see where you are. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, let's go.
Hello, Jocelyn. Welcome to the class. Hi. Okay, good evening. Um, I'm going to send you to your to a break room. Your classmates are working on this. They are ordering the steps to assemble a bike. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you, miss. Mm -hmm. you're, okay, you're going to go to break room number one. Johnny, ¿va a estar de listener siempre? Yes. Yes, Miss, es que ando fuera y no puedo okay. poner atrás. Ok. Gracias. You're welcome.
Welcome, Mayra. Well, good night. Good evening, Miss. Good evening. How are you? I am working. You're working. So you're going to be a listener? Yes. yes. Ah, okay. Well, okay. Thank you so much. It's okay. Ok, you need to think about those. ¿Estamos trabajando todos aquí o solo una persona? Yes, me yes, no. Yes, we're working. Ok, excellent. Good job. Continue. No, ya ve. Lo dibujo en el orden correcto para ensamblar todas las partes. Entonces, yo digo que el primer. Number one is shipping. Pero no, la mía ya le puso frame. Ok. No. Ah, pues no retiro lo dicho. Retiramos. Lo dicho. Bien, good job. Very good. You're very good. Excellent. Good job, you guys. El corazón y la carita falta. La perdimos. Bueno, yeah. perdón. Me fueron en lugar de ser caritas. Yes. Bueno, la nariz y el corazón. Ok. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Miss.
separation is done. Yeah. 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 What are the last equipment? Great. Good job. Excellent. What are the last equipment? No me vea eso ahí. Es que. Es que no sé por qué. Voy a ver si me deja borrarlo ahora. Porque en el anterior no me dejó borrarlo. No, no me deja. Pero ¿saben qué? A mí. Yo aquí. Díganme, señora ingeniosa, mírenme, mírenme. Ingeniería. Chelito, chelito le ponemos. ¿ves? Eso, líquido. Sí, un cuadrito, un cuadrito. ¿Ves? Chelito le ponemos, ¿ves? Yes. <risa> 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 Así dicen mis, al... mis, al... mis alumnos. Yo les digo corrector y ellos no, chelito, profe. Va, chelito le digo yo. <risa> Okay, okay, welcome back. So we're gonna order the numbers. We're gonna name the parts of the bicycle. Okay, I'm gonna give you pronunciation first, okay? Let's go with pronunciation. We have pedals, frame, handlebars, shipping, saddle, wheels, like hot wheels, right? One more time. Pedals. Así cuando yo les digo, ¿cuál es el number one? Y usted me va a decir el nombre correct, correctly. Pedals, frame, handle bars, shipping, saddle, wheels. One more time, backwards. Backwards es al revés, backwards. Wheels, saddle, shipping, handle bars, frame, Pedals. Okay, let's go. Number one. What is number one, Ana Veronica? Number one is, is frame. Frame. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ana. Okay, let's go with. Oh. Uh, yeah. Javier, are you there, Javier? Let me number two, please. Yes, miss. The number two is... Wheels. 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 Wheels, okay. Thank you, Javier. Let's go now with Jennifer Amaya. Jennifer Amaya, can you tell okay. me number three, please? Pedals. Pedals. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Jennifer. Let's go now with Julio Aguillon. Julio, can you tell me number four, please? Handlebar. Handlebars. Excellent. Good job. Eric Josue, can you tell me number five, please? And number five is Sando. Saddle. 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 Okay, excellent. Good job. Thank Saddle. you. Monica Avalos, can you tell me number six, please? Shipping. Excellent. Good job. 
Yes. So the correct order will be, and you repeat in your houses, okay? Frame, wheels, pedals, handle bars, saddle, and finally shipping, right? Excellent, good job. <clears throat> so now we learned the parts of a bicycle in English. It's easy, 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 easy. Okay, let's go here. Woo! Let's see this question right here really quick. And we have one, two, three questions. Can you please read the question number one, Jocelyn? Do you agree that regardless of the size of a business, analyzing costs is essential to make profit? Excellent. Good job. Thank you. Uh, can you read question number two, please, Eric Reyes? Okay. Uh, have you ever calculated the price of a product? Excellent. Good job. Let's see now. <laughs> uh, Blanca Tunaka, can you read the last one, please? Can you name three pixel expenses to calculate, calculate the cost of a product? Excellent. Can you repeat just this one? Fixed. Fixed. Calculate. Calculate. Q, Q, calculate. Calculate. Excellent, good job. Okay, so yes, we're gonna do these three questions. We're gonna talk, remember, this is a conversational activity. Uh, but I have a question for you before. Do you know what is profit? What is it? Ganancias. Exactly. Thank you very much. Mayra, are you there? Excellent. Okay. Yes, me. <laughs> like to hear you participate. Excellent. So it says, do you agree that regardless, and importa, verdad, of the size of a business, it can be a small business, medium business, or a high business, like a really top business. Analyzing cost is essential to make profit, right? Next question, have you ever calculated the price of a product? You, you have to calculate? Yes, I have, no, I haven't. Can you name three fixed expenses to calculate the cost of a product? I will calculate three fixed expenses, right? Like the rent of the place. If you're gonna sell something, the rent. If your business is online, a fixed, uh, a fixed expense could be the internet connection, right? So those are fixed expenses. You, like we learned about this in a couple classes ago. Okay, so this is a conversational activity. We're gonna go and discuss these questions and that's about it, okay? Remember, if your break rooms are not working, so the participants are not speaking or something like that, you can call me and I'm gonna make other break rooms. Yeah, yeah, you other break rooms, okay? Let's see. This one, this one, this one, this one. Uy, aquí va puro oyente. Oh, voy a tener que hacer dos porque hay muchos oyentes. A lot of listeners today. Hmm. Okay, let's go.
Ahí tenemos las invites. Let's go, let's go. Mayra, Jocelyn. Let's go. Let's participate, you guys. Let's participate. Yeah, miss, yeah. Okay. Oseas, my friend.
And the, the second is, have you ever calculated the price of a product? And in my case, yes, I, 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 I calculated the price of a product. Okay, the first question is for <clears throat> let's see. Eric Josue Reyes. Oh no, está activado. Okay, Eric Josue Reyes. Do you agree that regardless? So aquí somos gonna decir solo agree or disagree. I agree or I disagree. So Eric Josue Reyes, the first question. Do you agree that regardless of the size of a business, analyzing costs is essential to make profit? Eric? Eric Josué. No lo escucho, cannot hear you. Bueno, me voy a quedar siempre con Eric, pero this time we're gonna go just with Eric Reyes, okay? Eric Reyes, um, do you agree that regardless of the size of a business, analyzing costs is essential to make a profit? Of course, Miss, I agree. I agree, okay, excellent, good job. Eric, can you ask the second question to another participant, please? Okay, the question is by um, Have you ever? And Jocelyn. Okay, let's uh, see. Have you ever calculated the price of a product? Yes, I have. Excellent, good job. Jocelyn, can you make the last question to another participant, please? Can you ask it? Yes. Um, Oscar, can Oscar you... Is... Oscar is not here today. Ah, okay, let me see. Um, Ana Veronica. Okay. Can you name three fixed expenses to calculate the cost of a product? Um, dress, uh, uh, cost five energy, rent, salaries. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Ana Veronica. Jocelyn, can you repeat this word, please? I said fix it. Uh-huh. And what is the correct? I, I'm not sure. Fixed. Fixed. Okay, okay. excellent. Thank you, Jocelyn. 
Okay, let's go here, let's continue. So we have our reading part in this here. It says, read the following text featuring tips on how to analyze the cost of a product, okay? How to analyze the cost of a product. Then answer the questions below, okay? So we're gonna uh, read this. I'm gonna read it the first time for you. If you have questions, you can ask me. If not, I'm gonna send you the audio to the WhatsApp group so you can practice, okay? So, síganme ahí, eh, I'm gonna be pointing. There are three important factors, factors, I mean, businesses need to consider when pricing a product. The cost of production, the market demand for the product, and the desired markup by the business. The cost of production. Okay, the cost of production. Fixed and variable costs determine the selling price of a business firm's product. Fixed costs include items such as the rent for your office or manufacturing space. Variable costs include items that change with your sales volume, like labor and materials. In pricing your product, First, determine how much of your fixed and variable cost go into producing each unit of your product. Although it may be a difficult calculation, a simple formul formula to help you is to add your total fixed cost to your total variable cost. Then you divide the total by your estimated total sales. You will have then your cost of production per unit. Now, you have to sell the product for at least this amount in order to cover the cost of production. Market demand for a product or service. Market demand for a product or service is the second factor that a business owner should consider when pricing a product. The law of demand is that there is an inverse relationship between demand and price. As prices fall, demand rises, and as prices rise, demand falls. Demand for your product is just as important to consider when setting a price as the cost of production. That is usually a positive or direct relationship between consumer income and demand. As a consumer's income goes up, so does demand for the product. Determining the markup of a product. Regardless of the type of small business, markup is the amount you add to the cost of your product to determine the selling price. The markup percentage is determined by the amount of your planned profit, the type of the product or service you're selling, how rapidly the product sells, and the amount of service performed by the seller. Okay? So this is basically the reading we have. Uh, do you have questions? I, I, I'm gonna repeat it for sure, I'm gonna repeat it. But I'm just asking if you have some questions. There. If you don't have questions, I'm gonna send you the audios. Not audios, audios. Right. I'm going to send them, lo pueden enviar así como separados, pero yo no sé mucho, because it's a long reading. Okay, if there are no questions, I'm going to send the audios. Remember, listen to the audios. It's important. It's going to help you. There are three important factors businesses need to consider 
when pricing a product, the cost of production, the market demand for, and also on. There are three important factors businesses need to consider when pricing a product. The cost of production, the market demand for the product, and the desired markup by the business. The cost of production. Fixed and variable cost determine the selling price of a business firm's product. Fixed costs include items such as the rent or for your office or manufacturing space. Variable costs include items that change with your sales volume, like labor and materials. In pricing your product, first, determine how much of your fixed and variable costs go into producing each unit of, unit of your product. Although it may be a difficult calculation, a simple formula to help you is to add your total fixed cost to your total variable cost. Then you divide the total by your estimated total sales. You will have then your cost of production per unit. Now you have to sell the product for at least this amount in order to cover the cost of production. Next. Market demand for a product or service. Market demand for a product or a service is the second factor that a business owner should consider when pricing a product. The law of demand is that there is an inverse relationship between demand and price. As prices fall, demand rises, and as prices rise, demand falls. Demand for your product is just as important to consider when setting a price as the cost of production. There is usually a positive or direct relationship between consumer income and demand. As consumer income goes up, so that's demand for a product. Next. Determining the markup of a product. Regardless of the type of small business, markup is the amount you add to the cost of your product to determine the selling price. The markup percentage is determined by the amount of your planned profit. The type of product or service you are selling, how rapidly the product sells, and the amount of service performed by the seller. Okay, there you go. Those are the audio so we can practice pronunciation. And also, don't just practice pronunciation. Remember that we're trying to improve the intonation as well. Those are two things. But also, please, you guys, try to understand what you're reading. If you don't understand, ask your classmates, hey, what does it say here? Or do you understand this part? Maybe they can help you, OK? Or you can look it up on the internet. Because it is important to understand what we're reading to have intonation. Just reading in this moment. Is the activity clear for you? Yes, miss. Yes, yes. miss. Okay. For sure. So, so. Well, just reading. But remember, practice. And then you have the audios, you guys. You also have the audios. So it's not going to be difficult because you have the audios to practice, right? Let's the see. Cookies. The cookies, not the cookies. The audios. <laughs> not the audios, right? Remember, we're going to practice pronunciation in this moment. Okay, let's go.
Ahí tenemos los invites.
as consumer income goes up, so that's the demand for a product. Determining the markup of a product. Regardless of the type of small business, markup is the amount you add to the cost of your product to determine the selling price. The markup percentage is determined by the amount of your planned profit, the type of product or service you are selling, how rapidly the product sells, and the amount of service performed by the seller. Determining markup of a product. Regardless of the type of small business, markup is the amount you add to the cost of your product to determine the selling price. The markup percentage is determined by the amount of your planned profit, the type of product or service you are selling, how rapidly the product sells, and the amount of service performed by the seller. Okay, uh, practice now. Yes, I'm going to start. Okay. There are three important factors businesses need to consider when pricing a product. The cost of production, the market demand for the product, and the, the design markup by the business. The cost of production. Fixed and variable cost determine the selling price of a business firm's, firm's product. Fixed cost include items such as the rent for your office or manufacturing space. Variable cost include it Items that change with your sales volume, like labor and materials. In pricing your product, first determine how much of your fixed and
no se quieren ir a mimir, pero no wanna go mimir, no wanna go mimir. ¿Está haciendo frío, Ana Verónica? ¿Is it cold? Yes, miss. Lo vasco es de cold. Es cold. Ah, lo vasco, yes, I bet it's cold. Yeah. That's why you have the hat. Y, y lo que ocurre es que últimamente, no sé, pero estoy desarrollando como una alergia que de repente se pone helado y comienzo una sensación como, o sea, como coquilla y estornudar y estornudar, entonces me tengo que poner gorro. Exacto. Pero no sé, no me, no me pasaba antes. ¿Cuántos años No sé. tienes? How old are you? 29. Yeah, the same thing. Así estoy yo también. Same thing happens to me. El achaque de los 30. <laughs> yeah, of course. Miren, ¿saben qué? Acabo de desbloquear una nueva actualización. La rodilla me avisa si llueve. También. <laughs> <ríe> sí, <ríe> esa actualización no la tenía. La, la, este año la descargué, creo yo. <ríe> ya me avisa Se le actualizó si me... el software. Si sí, me actualizó, si me duele la rodilla, ah, vaya, perdigo yo. Ya acabo el llueve, ya. Uh -huh. Ya ven, ya, ya tengo, ¿eh? ¿Cómo es? Este, eh, programado un sistema meteorológico. Eh, está nice, it, it's nice. Ok. El radar ya le funciona. <ríe> ya me funciona el radar, yes. Eso se desbloquea ya casi cuando no va llegando a los 30. <ríe> ok, let's go. I'm gonna go with the last attendance because at the beginning no había nadie, oh my goodness. Eh, habíamos como... Ten people, yeah. Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Ángela Guadalupe Sa Hernández Sánchez. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez. Denis Enrique Saldaña Claros. Eric Enrique Reyes Martínez. Ahí está. Pressing a miss. Eric José Reyes Molina. Jennifer Esmeralda Maya Arias. Jennifer, ¿no? Ok, Johnny Alexander Escobar Calderón. Pressing is. José Alfredo Hueso López. Present Miss, present. Jocelyn Angelina Ramírez Melgar. Present Miss. Julio César Aguillón Arevalo. Present. María Julia Ramos Olívar. Present Miss. Oh. Mayra Patricia Artiga Vázquez. Present Miss. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón, Present. Oscar René Molina Calidonio, no, Oscar no, no sé quién conoce, José Figueroa Cisneros, Rafael Antonio Hernández Castillo, Rafael Antonio no está aquí, no, okay. Rafael Antonio Martínez Navarrete, Resumes. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Presen mis. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Omar Seth Galicia López. Presen. En Amado Javier Rutia Rivera. Presen mis. Okay, that's gonna be it for tonight, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Have a good night. See you Bye tomorrow. bye. Bye See you bye. tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a good night, you guys. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you. It, it's raining heavy. My leg the says. <laughs> My leg is fine. It's not raining here. <laughs> Okay. Good bye. night, miss. Have a good night, Rafael. Miss. Javier, tell me. Eh, me podría agregar al grupo como ya no trabajo para Dilosa el teléfono era del corporativo y por eso no me pude estar agregando hasta que alguien me envió a mi personal el el, Ah, ¿ya no está el trabajando link para la misma compañía? no O sea que no está trabajando con Mayra. no Oh, uh, yo ayer le dije a ella, mire, agregue, dígale que se conecte. Sí, sí <ríe> me escribió. ah, ok, ok. Vaya, le voy a mandar el código del grupo. Ahí le va a aparecer el código. Con ese código usted ya se puede agregar al grupo de WhatsApp. Ok. Pero está trabajando con otra compañía, Javier. Sí. Ah, vaya, igual se puede inscribir al siguiente módulo solo con la planilla de esa compañía. 
vaya, voy a hablar con él. Porque él de recursos humanos soy yo. Ah, my goodness, Javier, excelente. Pues hable con usted mismo, ¿ok? Consúltelo con la almohada. Vaya, está bien, <laughs> mi ok, have a good night. Bye, take care. Night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Excelente.